We have seen, of course, uh, hackings and, and cyber incidents for Australia. Has Australia been a target by China? Uh, on this occasion, no. Uh, the Foreign Minister Penny Wong says Australia's electoral systems weren't compromised, but she says this other activity has obvious implications for Australia. Uh, Penny Wong saying it's unacceptable and it must stop. Now, this relates to a couple of incidents in the UK and the US. Uh, in terms of the UK, uh, it claims that politicians, democratic institutions were targeted. Uh, the UK is accusing China of accessing the details of 40 million voters held by the Electoral Commission. And as for the US, uh, it says seven Chinese nationals targeted members of Congress, other officials as well, and they were part of a Chinese state-sponsored group known as APT31. Now, China, of course, disputes these claims. A foreign ministry official says those UK accusations are just disinformation, and the Chinese embassy in Washington, D.C. says, look, this is just a groundless accusation. But, Paul, there's a lot of voices as well in this, in this debate or this discussion because New Zealand as well is saying they're being targeted uh, alongside the U.S. and the U.K., yeah, the complaints are piling up and uh, on the back of this we also heard from uh, the uh, GCSB uh, minister, the GCSB is New Zealand spy agency, the minister Judith Collins saying um, New Zealand uh, was attacked back in 2021. Uh, there were links to another Chinese state-sponsored group, this one known as APT40. Uh, the GCSB says uh, that activity was contained. The hackers were removed shortly after access accessing the network, uh, but Judith Collins saying that was unacceptable. And there's a risk here for New Zealand calling out this behaviour because it's small, it's an open economy, it's very trade dependent and China's its biggest trading partner. Uh, so calling out this uh, sort of behaviour uh, does come with an element of political risk.